What is up, you guys? Welcome back to this week's episode of Fly Tying Friday. Um, I'm actually really excited. So Kona Hooks, which is a new um, hook company. I, I, I don't know who owns them, but I got some emails from Flyman Fishing Company. So I'm assuming that that's probably the, the affiliation there. But um, Kona sent me a couple sample packs of some hooks to try out and test in some of my videos. So today, of course, seeing as though it's almost winter time, which kind of ruins carp fishing for most, I actually have a spring that is right by my house that just goes off in the wintertime, makes it really easy to fish because the water comes down and most of the fish get congregated in a tiny little area. So I fish for carp all winter long, unlike most people which have to wait until the summertime. But today we're going to be tying um, a slight variant of John Montana's carp hybrid which is just a small kind of kind of suggestive pattern that can be all kinds of stuff. It's got a little tail that can make it look like a clam. It's you know, you can tie it in different colors to make it look like little damsels or any sort of small crayfish or crustacean on the bottom of the lake. But um super deadly fly. It's probably caught 90% of the carp I've caught in my life have been caught on this fly. So it's kind of a staple. Um, and we're gonna be tying this on the Kona Big Game Hunter size four hook, which I'll show you close up how this thing looks um, in a second, but should be pretty cool. It's a freaking stout hook. I've been tying a couple, I've tied a couple flies on it already just to kind of test them out before this. And I'm super impressed. This thing is super, super solid. So let's, uh, let's get started. Okay, I decided to switch shirt colors so you could see this a little bit better. Um, but so we're gonna start off the fly. It's basically just a three or four material bug. It's pretty simple. Um, we're gonna start off with these little Kona um, size four big game hunter hooks. It's just like a small streamer hook. Like I said, I'm pretty impressed with this hook. It's freaking stout. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start this off. Um, I'm gonna be using like a black 280 denier um, UTC thread. And all we're gonna do is lay a thread base down all the way to the back of the hook. I'm gonna cut this right here real quick. Lay our thread base back, and then I'll come back up here. And we're going to want this these barbell eyes right here on top of the hook, which is going to force it to invert in the water so it rides hook point up. That That's going to stop us from snagging stuff and blowing any shots at carp. So we're just going to figure eight this on here. When I tie this pattern, I basically just butt these eyes up right against the eye of the hook um, in order, just because most of the materials are on the back end. And these eyes really aren't for aesthetic as much as they are for keeping that hook writing point up and uh, making sure that uh, making sure that the fly is heavy enough to get down in front of the fish. So as with almost all barbell eyes that I put on, I'll figure eight those on and then I'll add a quick dab of glue, typically on the bottom side of this because that's the side that's uh, bonding to the hook. So I'll add a quick little dab of glue. So I'm like covering up, I just gotta do that to get over there. Okay. And there's our like underbody of our fly right there. So I'm gonna add some wraps to the back. Come a little bit more forward. And then this right here is just a uh, maroon or burgundy, I don't even, I think it's just like a maroon chenille. You can see I have a pre-cut strip. It's about an inch and a half long. Uh, and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie this in as a tail and it's going to create kind of the illusion that this thing could be a cra or a, um, a clam because as you guys know a lot of carp will actually be digging around eating freshwater clams so it covers that end of the spectrum right there so we'll tie that back a little bit where the hook right back to where the hook starts to bend I'm going to cut that and we're going to burn that here at the end of the fly real quick um, I know John Montana uses like a peacock a black peacock dub just kind of like this so we're going to use this on the body um, and we're basically just going to create a dubbing noodle that's going to wrap all the way up basically to right before those eyes and so we'll dub this on and just a quick little noodle as you can kind of see there I'm just doing a nice tight uh, dubbing noodle I, I feel like uh, the key to getting aesthetically pleasing and durable flies when you're using dub like this is to use a very very tight noodle and that'll actually give you a lot more control over the width of you know how, how uh, thick the dubbing is as you tie it into the fly 
this fly, you know, we want this to be a pretty meaty bug. So we're going to just wrap this up and just making sure we have a slight taper all the way up the fly. Like I said, I like mine to be pretty, pretty stout and meaty. So I'm going to wrap that up and then I'm going to finish that off right. And that was like the perfect amount of dub. Um, for extra bugginess, you can grab some Velcro or some sort of brush and brush this back and then create a nice little, you know, silhouette of a bait fish too if you want it to look like that. Um, and then next step is we just add a collar uh, to this and essentially what that's going to do is it's going to go over the top of the entire fly and create the profile of, like I said, a, either a clam or it can be some sort of crustacean or crayfish or you name it. Um, I know that John uses, I believe he uses like Hungarian partridge on his fly. Uh, not really my thing and I like that you have a little bit of a contrast in colors on these. Instead of it all just being green and olive, I like to have you know, a little bit of tan and green and that kind of stuff. I feel like it just makes it a little bit fishier. So what we're going to use right now is, this is actually, believe it or not, just schloppen um, fibers from whiting. Uh, and we're going to use some of the shorter fibers here on the back of this. As you can see, those are kind of a nice length right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to peel some of these off right here, as you can see. So I'll peel a nice little section of that off. And I'm going to cut this, give myself like a half an inch of this stuff to tie in, just to make sure we're not losing any of it. What I'll do is I'll tie this in, put some wraps in front and behind of it, and then I'm going to take my scissors and cut off that little butt end that I just left. Tie this in, if I can get to it. This is where good sharp scissors help, like these rising scissors. Okay, so... Now we just have this and we're going to palmer this up the fly right here on the back end and I want to usually be able to get like two or three good wraps just like that and then I'll finish on the top of the hook. That's just where I usually finish my flies, there's no, really no reason to do that but personal preference. Okay, so I'll take that and I'll cut that off and as you can see now we have a really really buggy little fly where these materials are going to cover over when this gets wet and create a nice narrow little body um, for the fly just like that and then that's basically the whole fly I like to finish mine off with a little bit of dub around the eyes and then I'll just whip finish up in the front and add a quick dab of glue just to make sure that this thing is as indestructible as possible but let's do one wrap on each side of this Oops. there and there I'll add some wraps on the back end and whip finish right on the eyes. Trying to not cover up the actual eyelet of that hook. And then I'll, again, I'll flip this over on the back side and a nice little dab of glue right on those wraps. And that right there is the finished fly. Actually, not yet. Not the finished fly yet. Now it's the finished fly. After I put this little bit of fire on the tail, just to make sure that that's not going to come undone and get frayed or anything like that. It has officially been glued to my finger, so that's good as well. But I'll put this back up on the vise. And then I'll actually show you guys this red one too, or kind of like a more you know, blood, blood leech color right here as well. So the, that's probably the most effective carp fly that's ever been created. I think John Montana literally came up with the perfect fly in almost any situation. So um, give it a try, super easy. Um, I'm gonna link to Kona's website in the description below so you guys can kind of check out the lineup of hooks they have. They sent me quite a few different kinds of hooks so I think the next couple videos are gonna be tied on their hooks um, and we're gonna be messing around with some of that stuff. So. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on Monday. Later.